Hey everybody, my name is Taylor from SoSo -So Cycles, and welcome back to the MotorSwap Ducati project. And in this episode, because we now finally know that 1098 actually runs, let's live up to the name of the show, let's MotorSwap a Ducati. So the goal today is to drop the 1098 motor and actually just hang it in the 748 frame and see kind of what it's going to take to actually make it work. What radiator we're going to use, what oil cooler we're going to use, what's going to fit the fairings, uh, things like that. And I actually have a couple little things in store for you to show you that I think you're going to be pretty happy about. So let's get started. While everything was apart, I decided to label all the wiring harness so I know where it is going back together. I intend to remove all the lighting wiring from the harness, so having labels like this is going to help a lot. Baby, you give me Airboxes and 1098s are definitely a new thing to me, and the fact that it's one piece and also contains the throttle bodies and fuel injectors is a new thing to me. It's very, very unlike the 916 airbox, where everything's separate and the top of the airbox is actually the bottom of the fuel tank. Okay, we are just about done. Getting this thing ready to drop the exhaust out, which means we are just about ready to drop the motor out. Aha. And all that means is we gotta drop this, we gotta drop that one out at the 748, and then we gotta start finally putting it in there. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So I'll finish dropping the motor, and then we'll get the 748 up here and start, uh, start getting that thing ready. Maybe you And I figured you guys might find it a little interesting to see the inside of a slipper clutch. This thing's coming out of the 748 and will work perfectly in the 1098, so I figured we might as well use it. And a brief description of what a slipper clutch is, if you have a stock clutch and you're on the track coming into a corner real hot downshifting and you let out that clutch, sometimes the back tire will hop around a little bit. With the slipper clutch, it keeps the clutch disengaged just long enough for the engine to come up to wheel speed, thus preventing wheel hop and making it a lot easier to corner. It is now a couple of days after that last shot. It seems to be kind of a common occurrence right now, but hopefully not for too much longer because now we're done taking apart old stuff. Uh, the swing arm bolt that went through this uh, 748, 916, whatever swing arm, was super, super stubborn. I have never tried to get one out that, that was that corroded and nasty. Um, but I managed to do a pretty solid number on my finger that I may have actually needed stitches for. Um, so it is a mass of purple and gross, but I did promise we'd get that motor hung. So that's what we're gonna do today. Um, let's just get into it because I want to show you cool stuff. Yeah, let's just get into it. And the first thing we need to do is drill out the 748 frames motor mount bolt holes to accept the 1098 motor mount bolts. As you can see, the 748 one is on the right, 1098 one is on the left. It is significantly larger, so all we got to do is bust out a drill. And first in the series of things that I'm very, very excited to show you, well, let's just get the front end off of this thing and, and see what happens. And there's a few 
few things we gotta say about this front end. Because right now, I'm gonna show you this thing. This is a front end off a 999S. And because the triples are very similar, we can use them on a 748. And there is the lovely Owens logo. And yes, they are using radial calipers, which is exactly why we saved the calipers off the 1098. They will bolt right on. And there's a little stuff you have to do to make the brake rotors on the 748 or 916 or whatever wheel actually work with these calipers, but we have it taken care of. So let's get this front end together and put it on the bike. And with the front end on, it is time, it is time to finally put the 1098 motor in the 748 frame. So let's do it. So we're almost done for the day, and you'll notice that we are missing a fairly large piece of the puzzle to make this thing a roller. And that leads me to what I'm gonna show you next. Now this may be the crown jewel of this build. It was a non-negotiable. Um, they're almost impossible to find unless you know where to look. So thank you, Michael from Championship Cycles for coming through with this, because this is a competition length Bursi magnesium swing arm. I look forever for one of these. This is a big deal. I'm really happy about this. So let's take a look at it. And one of the big reasons for getting one of these is they are quite a bit lighter and quite a bit longer than the stock swing arm. And I remember reading an interview back in the day with Pierre Treblanche, the guy that designed the 999, saying that they put a longer swing arm on this factory 916, it made it handle a heck of a lot better. Never quite made it to the street versions, but all the competition versions had them. So we do too. Took a little finagling, but we now have a uh, magnesium swing arm. Heck yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna get the hub and stuff ready and throw it on there. Okay, cool. Okay, well, I still need to make a roller, so I'm not gonna use, there we go. Look at that. Uh, so, okay, so we still wanna make it a roller, so I'm not gonna put the brake hanger on just yet because I think I have to use the 1098 one for the wheel speed sensor, and that's a whole bucket of worms I need to figure out later. But for now, I just wanna make sure everything fits. I wanna make sure that it all works together, and I wanna be able to roll this thing. So, I'm just gonna attach a few things here. so we can have a roller. And the way you make that long swing arm work on the 916 chassis is with this incredibly hard to find shock linkage. So thanks again to Michael. Uh, as you can see, it has two settings. One is progressive, one is linear, and you just set it up depending on what track you wanna use, what kind of engagement of the shock you wanna have, and you can adjust your height with this. This is the height adjustment rod for that linkage and that swing arm and you can adjust the height using this right here. So let's get it on the bike. Oh, 
Whoa! That feels good. You guys, that feels real good. I'm taking this thing off of there. I'm so excited. Look at that. Man, that's really cool. That is really, really cool. Should really tighten that. Oops. Or not. And the final piece of the puzzle for today is because this bi-posto subframe weighs a frickin' ton. Well, not really. It probably weighs maybe five or six pounds, but we're not a bi-posto anymore. And a bi-posto simply means two seats. We are a monoposto. And I figured might as well get the aluminum one for my buddy Justin at Corsa Garage. You'll be seeing a lot more of that logo as we put this thing together because Justin's a really good friend of mine and he has supplied us with quite a bit of the body of this thing actually all the body of this thing. So that's actually two awesome shout outs to people that have really helped me in the beginning stages of this build. Uh, Justin from Course Garage, his help has been indispensable just finding stuff. Um, and Michael from Championship Cycles who helped me source the swing arm and a bunch of other stuff. Thanks guys, I couldn't have done it without you guys. So let's get this on and let's call it good. And now, Glamour Shot. Well, we now have a motor-swapped Ducati. See you next time.